On December 31st, the New England Patriots season of 78 would end in the playoffs. But there was no need to pity the Pats. New England had qualified for the playoffs by winning the championship of one of the strongest divisions in pro football, the AFC East. This is their story. This is how the East was won. Patriot owner Billy Sullivan is dedicated to winning more than just the East. The first step toward that goal was taken in April of 1979 with the naming of Bucko Kilroy as the new general manager and six-year assistant Ron Earhart as the new head coach. I, I, I have never lost in football and I do not intend on starting right now. I am very, very pleased with the opportunity. It's an opportunity that uh, is just tremendous for myself. A year ago, the theme for the New England Patriots was how the East was won. I'd like to put a little sequel to that by saying we'd like to go on the road to the Super Bowl. Since 1973, Ron Earhart has been involved in building one of the most powerful attacks in pro football. And it all starts with quarterback Steve Grogan, who leads one of the most diversified attacks in the league. Grogan is talented and tough. No amount of pressure can cause him to short arm a pass. Grogan has a strong, accurate arm and good legs to go with it. With 539 yards rushing, he is quite simply the best running quarterback in the business. And while his reckless style presents its perils, it reaps many more rewards. Grogan is a runner, not a scrambler. New England regularly relies on quarterback draw plays, with Grogan locating a hole in the pass rush and hustling through it. Grogan's unique abilities add an entire chapter to the Patriot playbook. Rollout action provides four additional plays, or while moving to either side of the field, Grogan can pass, or if all receivers are covered, run for the end zone. Because Grogan can run, defensive ends often commit toward him allowing a running back easy access to the corner when the Patriots run the option play. The results are reciprocal when New England uses their bootleg action. A good play fake draws the defensive tackle toward the running back and freezes the defensive end who has committed himself inside. Meanwhile, three Patriot blockers lead Grogan downfield. The bootleg works because defenses must respect the New England running backs. The option works because they must constantly guard against Grogan. And there's an added benefit. Opposing defenses must play cautiously, making offensive linemen's jobs easier. Not that the Patriots' fine line needs any help. It's strong. From center Bill Lankaitis out to tight end Russ Francis and double tight end specialist Don Hasselbeck. Tackle Shelby Jordan and guard Sam Adams man the right side of the Patriot line. While on the other, tackle Leon Gray and guard John Hanna are both all pros. With Pete Brock and Terry Falcon providing backup strength, the Patriot line freed New England runners for over 3,000 yards in 1978 and helped establish another NFL first. Four different backs gained over 500 yards, and even those who didn't could snap off a long one. Number 44, Don Calhoun, had the AFC's second longest run in 1978 and added almost 400 yards to the team rushing total. Number 32, Andy Johnson, was most versatile. Besides being an excellent receiver, Johnson can throw like the quarterback he once was and run like the running back he now is. One who gained 675 yards in 1978. 
Sam Cunningham led all New England runners with 768 yards and scored eight times. Cunningham's style reminds one of a snowball rolling downhill. Horace Ivory, number 23, calls to mind a pinball bouncing from bumper to bumper while racking up 693 yards and scoring 11 touchdowns. Steve Grogan joined Ivory, Cunningham, and Johnson to give the Patriots four 500-yard rushers. And though no New England runner made the league's top 10, the team established an NFL record for rushing yardage. But the Patriots were not a one-dimensional team. With an additional 3,000 yards worth of passing, there were more than enough airborne balls to keep Patriot receivers smiling. Tight end Russ Francis was the happiest as he had his best year in the pros. While Francis provided a steady pair of hands, wide receivers Harold Jackson, who came in a trade from Los Angeles, and third-year pro Stanley Morgan brought lightning-fast feet. Together, Morgan, number 86, and Jackson, number 29, ran away from secondaries and combined for 71 catches, almost 1,600 yards, and 11 touchdowns. So proficient was their offense that at times, the Patriots seemed to be on the field alone, teaming with talent. New England led the league in offense in 1978. But that's only half the story. The New England defense is packed with as much talent as the Patriot offense. Deployed in one of the league's toughest 3-4 defenses, the Patriots ranked second in the AFC against the run. A swarming New England defense could take away an opponent's big man, or its individual stars could drive a receiver right up the wall. A team does not use the 3-4 without an excellent nose tackle. In number 71, Sugar Bear Hamilton, the Patriots have one. A quick pursuer against the run, Hamilton can also pressure the pocket despite almost constant double-team blocks to defeat. With only three down linemen, defensive end pressure had to be constant, and it was. Left end Tony McGee led the team in sacks, while right end Richard Bishop, number 64, ranked second. McGee, number 78, entered the game in passing situations to pick a quarterback's pocket, while on running downs, Mel Lunsford held the left end fort. One of the strengths of the 3-4 is its control of opponents' attempts to outflank it. And this begins with good lateral pursuing ends like Lunsford, number 72. But outside containment can only be achieved through teamwork. It calls for support from tough cornerbacks like Mike Haynes, number 40. To an outside linebacker, containment is the name of the game. Players like Rod Schoet, number 56, must get to the ball before a pulling guard gets into him. Inside linebackers face a different challenge. Nose tackle Hamilton is responsible for using up as many blockers as he can. This leaves an inside linebacker, such as number 50, Sam Hunt, to go one-on-one -on -one with a running back.
Linebackers also provide a dual role against the pass. Like Steve Zabel, number 54, they must fill up passing lanes or become a fourth rush man on a pass pocket purge. When only one linebacker comes, it is not an all-out blitz, but it does create a four-man rush that can come from anywhere. Throw in another linebacker or two, or a cornerback, or safety like number 27, Doug Bedoin, and a quarterback is in trouble. The Patriots didn't care who got the sack, as long as someone did. The same type of teamwork that characterized the New England pass defense. Number 48, free safety Tim Fox, was around almost every free ball. And when safety mate Prentice McRae was injured, Doug Bedoin, number 27, became a starter. Number 26, Raymond Claiborne, and Michael Haynes, number 40, are two of the most exciting cornerbacks in the league. Dick Kahn was the fifth defensive back, a role that required a team man. But within the New England team framework, there is room for individual brilliance. Such a performer was inside linebacker Steve Nelson. Nelson, number 57, was the subject of a Sports Illustrated special, who, like a cat burglar, came out of nowhere, made a score, and then disappeared with his booty. In the Patriot galaxy of defensive stars, Nelson shone the brightest. But he was no more important than any other member of the team, no more valuable than the 11th man on the special team. With players like Mosi Tutupu, Jim McAllister, Don Westbrook, Carlos Pennywell, and Ray Kostick, an overflow of talent spills onto New England special teams, giving New England three outstanding units and one of the most complete teams in the NFL. As if one of the deepest rosters in the league isn't enough, the Patriots possess other intangible trump cards. For example, from owner Billy Sullivan, through every member of the New England family, the Patriots are the loosest team in the league. Each and every Patriot player knows he is backed by the best fans in the league. That they are the definition of the word fan from the term fanatic. One who is intemperately zealous. Every autumn Sunday, Patriot fans either live with their team or die with their team. Early in the season, Patriot backers were doing more dying than living as New England dropped two of its first three games. And when they fell behind the Raiders 14 to nothing in Oakland, a national television audience was sure it was witnessing the last gasp of a fallen championship contender. But the Patriots were not dead. By the fourth quarter, they had fought back to tie the game when a Mike Haynes interception put New England in its third heart-stopping situation in four weeks. Wide to the left is Morgan, second down seven for the Patriots at the Oakland 31. Brogan, bootlegging left, he's got room. 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Runs over the man and goes out of bounds at the Oakland two-yard line. Outstanding call. It was just Leon Gray and Grogan out to the left side. And Gray drew a bead on Jack Tatum and drove him back seven yards. 
What a run, what a call, what a play. 19 seconds to go. It is second and goal at the Oakland one. Cunningham in, touchdown! Sam Baird in from a yard out, and the Patriots have beaten the Oakland Raiders in Oakland. In it's two gone. of the first three weeks, the Patriots had died by a last second sword. Against Oakland, and for the remainder of the regular season, they would live by it. The sword was drawn again one week later when the Patriots trailed the Chargers late in the game. High right, first and ten Patriots at the Charger 30 with 55 seconds to go in the game. Brogan straight back to pass. Rolls to the right. Looking, looking. Fires back across his body. Francis open at the 20, at the 15, at the 10. Francis running for yardage to the 5. And it's first and goal to go for the Patriots at the San Diego 5-yard line. Brogan bootlegging right. Looking. Going to run it. Going to carry it down and in. He goes in. Steve Brogan. Brogan, never to be denied, stuck his nose into the end zone. The Patriots march 74 yards for the go-ahead touchdown with 31 seconds to go. They lead the miraculous the finishes Patriots. awakened a sleeping giant as New England rode their hot streak for five straight winning weeks. By the eighth week of the season, the Patriots were on the brink of first place. The smiles would soon disappear. It was time to put on a game face. The first place Miami Dolphins were in town. game followed the early season Patriot pattern as the Pats had to come from behind. This they did and went into the fourth quarter with the game very much on the line. Morgan left, Jackson right, second and 12. Backs are split. Brogan on a draw to Ivory inside the 20, inside the 15, inside the 10. He's all the way down to the line. Ivory's touchdown put New England ahead, but plenty of time remained for Bob Greasy, who had already completed 22 passes to pull the game out. This would be a game in which the defense supplied the clincher. Dolphins first down at the 15, back to throw Greasy. Rolls to the left, he is sacked! Back at the 8-yard line, Chicago coming Dunn. across for Tony McGee again. Greasy back to throw. He's going to be hit for a safety. He is sacked for a safety by Richard Bishop. But down in the end zone. Again, it was Bishop and McGee coming hard. After eight weeks, the Patriots were finally in first place. And they celebrated the next week by crushing the Jets under a 55-point avalanche. Logan back to throw. Sets it up, fires wide open, Francis, and he's driving it in. Touchdown! Four touchdown passes in the first half for Grogan. They've had the ball six times and have scored six touchdowns in the first half. What a performance! The Patriots' performance over the next few weeks was not quite so awesome, however. In a team record seventh straight victory, New England scored just 14 points against Buffalo. The offense returned the next week, but the defense could not hold a big lead, and the streak ended. In New York, the Patriots had to pull off another fourth quarter miracle to beat the Jets by a field goal. A victory over Baltimore and a loss to Dallas in the next two weeks brought New England's record to 10 and four. But heading into the next to the last week of the season, the Patriots' first outright title ever was still waiting to be won. A 
big play by the defense, and Horace Ivory's touchdown on the very next play gave New England a fourth quarter lead. Buffalo came right back and went ahead 24 21. But with two and a half minutes left, the Patriots were poised on the Bills' two yard line. A fumble left New England three points short, and when Buffalo took a safety, the Patriots trailed 24 23. With a minute 48 left in the game, the situation was nothing new, but the stakes were. The Patriots started goalward, knowing that a loss would put the Pats in a showdown with the Dolphins in Miami the next week. A win would bring the New England Patriots the AFC Eastern Division title. All right, it's come down to this. The ball is at the Buffalo Bill four-yard line. The Patriots field goal unit is on. David Posey missed one earlier in the game. He had two blocked last week at Dallas. He will attempt a field goal of 21 yards, and Dick Kahn will hold with 11 seconds to go in the game. The Patriots either win it or lose it right here. A 21-yard field goal attempt by David Posey. The ball down. The kick is up. It's good! It's good! David Posey! A 21-yard field goal! David Posey banged it right through the uprights. Unbelievable! The ball game is over. The Patriots win it. 26 to 24, they win the Eastern Division Championship for the American Football Conference.